Shabbat Shalom, everyone. As I was reading the Torah portion this year, I could not help but find myself somehow identifying with Noah in two new ways that I never really have before. The first is that while the rain for the flood lasted only 40 days, we are told that Noah, his family, and his floating zoo then had to wait 150 days until the waters were no longer so turbulent. Then, even after those, let's say, approximately five months that they, had rested on, that they then rested on top of Mount Ararat, and when they were finally able to leave the ark, that it had been a total of a year's time. I know that we all can relate to this because we have been our own flood this year with COVID, the initial stages of shelter in place to now where we are all still waiting to be fully able to move out of our metaphorical arcs and to see what the new real what the new world really does look like. However, I am also relating to the role that Noah and his family had to play as zookeepers to all the animals that were on the ark with them. The one pair of animals from unclean varieties and then the seven pairs of the clean animals. While the ark is described as being a massive structure, I can only imagine what it would have actually been like to be around that many living creatures on the giant life raft that housed those that would repopulate the world. Some of you may know that during COVID, my family and I, like many families around the country, added a new fur baby to our house, Minnie, a puppy that's a beagle and we think maybe a German shepherd mix. This is not the first dog I have adopted, but it is the first pet we have gotten since moving to the Twin Cities. So now in our apartment, we have a puppy, a cat, an almost five-year-old, and yes, as I said, we are all in a two-bedroom apartment. I joke that sometimes in the morning, it can feel like I'm in a zoo in our house, a familiar feeling that Noah would have expressed had we gotten an inside look to the day-to-day -day of his life. Now my day is greatly impacted by Minnie. I have to come to realize in the four months that she has been with our family, making sure that her food is given to her at the proper times, that she is on a regular walking schedule, and that we play enough with her throughout the day to get those puppy wiggles out. As I'm sure you can imagine, the one that has made the biggest change to my personal life are the walks each day. And I must admit, this week, I was not a happy puppy Abba when we were already having to see how many would handle snow in the middle of October. However, these walks have opened my eyes to something that I was oblivious to in my own front yard. It was one morning when we were walking and crossing the street to the grassy area in front of our building, when I all of a sudden heard some crunching noise. It was almost sounded like a bone. And I was right. It was a chicken bone, to be exact, that someone had just tossed away for what I presume was a meal purchased from Cub. I heard Minnie chewing on it, and knew that she should not have that, because she could actually choke herself and really hurt herself. Without thinking twice, I reached my hand into her mouth and extracted the bone. She was fine, and I now walk her with a more attentive eyes these days, as does April. As the days and now months pass by, I realize that there is such a problem with littering and people just throwing whatever trash or food they no longer want to carry with them into the grass. And while I was upset with the people who are doing this without any regard for people's pets or the other animals that live in our city, upon reflection, I realized I was also upset with myself. I had lived in this building with the grassy area in front of our home for almost a year by the time Minnie came into our lives. I live on the top floor and look out onto the surrounding areas of green spaces. And not once had I ever thought, wow, Trash and littering is a real problem around my home. I only became aware of it when it impacted me directly. And that is something that should not happen with any of us. We must try and keep this level of consciousness with our involvement of the world. I also think about this in Noah. Noah is introduced to us as follows. Ele todo Noach, Noach ishadik tamim haya, bedorotav et Elohim, or in the English, this is the line of Noah. Noah was a righteous man. He was blameless in his generation, and Noah walked with God. 
Various commentators, including Rashi, say that this one line is rather curious for us and should be examined because this could either be giving Noah a lot of credit and respect, or it could be downplaying just how righteous Noah actually was. Rashi states, quoting from Tractate Sanhedrin 108a, says, Some of our rabbis explain it, meaning this word in his generation, to give him credit. He was righteous even in his generation. It follows that had he lived in a generation of righteous people, he would have been even more righteous owing to the force of good example. Here it seems like a logical argument. Noah was able to be righteous on his own when there was a ton of bad going on around him, that if he was around good people, he would have been influenced even more, almost like supercharging his righteousness. The quote from the Talmud continues. Others, however, explain it to his discredit. In comparison with his own generation, he was accounted righteous. But had he lived in the generation of Abraham, he would have been accounted as of no importance. This view seems to be suggesting that the only reason Noah was righteous was because everything around him was pretty rotten, and he was the best from the lot of misfits, and that had he been compared to Abraham's time, that he would not be viewed the same. There could be merit to this, as well as one of the other critiques that we have towards Noah, I believe, is that he did not, or at least our text did not say, that he told people about what was going to happen. He clearly had the time to because of the massive ark that his neighbors would have seen and would have asked, what's with the ark? He could have told them that they needed to change. However, he was focused in on his own task that God had instructed him to do, and nothing more. In my opinion, I think Noah was righteous and probably would have been seen as righteous even in Abraham's time as well. Noah was chosen to have this important task and had a personal relationship with God. But I also do believe that Noah was flawed. And I think it was the same flaw of the people of his generation, but to a much smaller scale. We are told that the reason that the world was to be destroyed was because of the lawlessness and idol worship that was going on in the world. Yet, however, at the end of last week's Parsha of Breshit, we are also told about how some of the leaders in the world, particularly the princes, and how they were acting. We are told at the end of Bray Sheet that the leaders in the community were taking whatever they wanted from others, often causing violence, and that some of them were taking women as their wives, and it did not matter to these people that they might have been married to someone else already. Everyone was self-absorbed. And to Noah's credit or discredit, he was also self-absorbed in his own task, the ark and the animals and the zoo-keeping life that laid ahead of him. I do not think Noah was trying to ignore the people intentionally, making sure they did not repent or change their ways, but he just was in his own world. And so was I. I was in my own world when I did not look at the world around me until it impacted my life directly. That is the sin of the flood. Lawlessness, yes. Lewdness, yes. But also self-absorption and not seeing how our actions can impact those around us or impact Mother Nature. It is my hope that as we move forward in Shabbat and in the week to come, that we can try each and every day to set up our consciousness to be removed from our own bubble. This will not happen every single moment of every single day, but to try and set aside a time to think outside of our own sphere of influence or our own bubbles. To think about and into what is impacting those around us and not wait until we have metaphorically have to pull the bone or trash out of the mouth of our pets. We should not be passive in this, but use this as an active exercise. Let us hope that with this sort of mindfulness and deep thought to our actions and others, that we will too will be able to be righteous and be able to walk with God, just like Noah did. Shabbat Shalom.